G'day and welcome to my STEC 30 autopilot tutorial. The STEC 30 is the autopilot that is found in A2A's um, Piper Cherokee 180. It's a fairly simple device. Uh, in the real world, it's an economical device. Um, look, it does the job, it does it well. It's nothing fancy, but it works. The STEC 30 has altitude hold, it also has five other modes stabilization mode, heading mode, track low and track high. And we'll have a look at all of these during this tutorial. First things first though, let's find out where in the cockpit all the autopilot -y bits are. Right, here's where all of your indicator lights are, as well as a couple of the controls for the autopilot. Over here is the autopilot master switch, which switches the autopilot on and off. This switch switches between GPS and nav whilst using the tracking mode. These select the various modes of the autopilot. And this is an autopilot disconnect, which is found on the yoke. To turn the autopilot on, switch the master autopilot switch on. Wait for all the indicator lights to disappear and for the little green ready light to be the only one there. And there it is, autopilot all ready to go. Now to choose between the various different modes, hit the little red button on the yoke and it will cycle through them. I'm going to cycle through to tracking low just for the moment. Okay, so there we are. The autopilot is engaged and we are in track low mode. I'll explain each of these modes shortly. To hold our current altitude, we hit the little black button on the yoke that will engage altitude hold. You can tell it's engaged because the little blue light that you'll see up there. There we are in level flight. Now it should be pointed out that before engaging altitude hold you should already pretty much be in straight and level flight and have the aircraft all trimmed out for the speed that you're at. Alrighty so let's have a look at each of the autopilot modes now. The first one we're going to have a look at is stabilization mode. What stabilization mode does is it'll keep your wings level if you're in level flight or you can set a, um, uh, a bank angle and it will maintain that as well and I'll show you now how you set that bank angle. Okay first let's engage stabilization mode. Now you'll see a little knob above the turn indicator and that's what you tweak to change your bank angle as I do now watch. Increase the bank to the left and we'll hold that. Take the bank to the right. And it will hold that. Simple. Now let's look at heading mode. Heading mode will cause the autopilot to steer the plane in whatever direction you have set on your heading bug. Like this. So first we set a heading. Then we engage the mode, we are in heading, now the plane automatically turns towards that direction and once it reaches it, it will continue to fly in that direction. See, we'll turn it a bit to the left and you can see the plane wants to track and follow what was on the heading bug. Okay, now we'll have a look at the tracking modes, track low and track high. Uh, what these things do is, they cause the autopilot to steer the plane in the direction of a VOR or a uh, GPS navigational point, depending on which mode you actually have selected uh, GPS or nav. With nav selected, you'll be tracking a VOR. With GPS selected, you'll be tracking a GPS navigation point. The difference between track low and track high is the fidelity. Generally speaking, track low is used for tracking VORs uh, and track high is used for tracking localizers. So from going from point A to point B, VOR to VOR, you're going to be using track low. And that's what we're going to have a look at right now. To track the VOR, you are of course going to want to have your NAV1 with the correct frequencies in it and the VOR1 uh, CDI all set up correctly as well. It's beyond the scope of this tutorial to show you how to do that. So um, Maybe I'll deal with that later. Once you do have those things set up, however, you're going to have to manually fly the plane 
and put it on course so you want to be within plus 10 or minus 10 uh, degrees of the course of the VOR and within plus one minus one uh, deflection points on the CDI for the VOR once you're all set to go uh, engaging the mode is rather easy okay first make sure that you have it set to nav this will make sure that you're tracking a VOR and not GPS data then press the red button on the yoke to cycle through the track low with that engaged the autopilot will attempt to keep the CDI needle centered all right, now we'll have a look at GPS tracking with the autopilot. First of all, make sure you actually have some navigational points programmed into your GPS, which we do. Then switch it to GPS. Select track low or track high. I use track low, seems to work all the time. And if you have a look at the GPS in the top right of the screen, you'll see that the autopilot is now steering the plane towards the um, direction of the navigation point. Now if you have multiple waypoints programmed into your GPS the autopilot will follow all of those points. It will go from point A to point B to point C to point D but something to keep in mind is that it will only turn at about a five degree bank angle. So if you have a bunch of waypoints all tightly packed together at tight angles it's not going to handle that very well. But if they're spread out over a distance, it should be fine. Something else to bear in mind is that just like when tracking a VOR, before engaging the autopilot to track it, you should already pretty much be on course. You know, set yourself up in the right direction, get yourself straight, level flight, then engage the autopilot, and all should be sweet. There's a bit more leeway between the GPS um, with the VOR, but still, it's always a good idea to have yourself set up, ready to go, before engaging the autopilot. Now occasionally, the autopilot might give you a warning saying that you need to adjust the trim. I'll give you an example of that now, so you know what it is and how to deal with it. Let's get our trim all out of whack so that these lights will pop up and we can show you what it all means and how to deal with it. All right, there we have the trim down light. What that means is we need to apply trim down. There's the trim up light, so we need to apply trim up. Now you shouldn't really get this too often. If you set yourself up properly before engaging the autopilot with your trim, you're very rarely going to get those warnings. But if you do get them, that's how you deal with them. The last thing that we need to have a look at is how to switch the autopilot off. Now there's a few ways of doing this and we'll have a look at those right now. We can flick the autopilot master switch off. We can hit the autopilot disengage button on the yoke. And we can press and hold the button up here. Well, that's pretty much it for the autopilot for this plane. If this was informative, you enjoyed it, you got something out of it, Please like, comment, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. Take care, guys.